Are there any back there? Because there were in the past. Uh, so, up oh, there's one. All right. Oh, there's two. Okay. I went online and I found a list of like 78 questions. So um, I'm prepared uh, to uh, try other things. So, although a lot of them, I was I was I was skimming through them and saying I have no idea. So, <laughs> what is the Reformed Baptist Church? I'm, a Baptist church that's reformed. Are there any other ones? I'm sorry. Are there any other questions from from the floor? And are there any on, online? Okay, we're looking for that. Okay, well, get those to me if. Um, all right. Oh boy, here's a great question. All right. Um, okay. All right. Um, all right. These are stumpers. All right. <laughs> so uh, the first question um, is: Is uh, are the saved people who are saved? still slaves to sin, or is sinning among the saved a voluntary choice? Good question. So um, uh, we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 6, because I can answer part of that um, uh, very easily, very authoritatively, and the other part we'll work on. So um, uh, uh, I'm using the, the, new, the New Revised Translation, uh, for those of you online, uh, we actually have these. Are they, are they in the... Okay, so you can, you can uh, follow along if you want. Um, our pew Bibles have two sections, and the page numbers start all over again. So the back section, the, the smaller of these two sections, that's where we're looking at today on page, um, uh, page 156 in the back section. So, um, so we looked at this a couple of weeks ago, um, and uh, we'll, we'll see what... Paul's got to say about it today. Um, so I'm just going to read uh, starting in verse 1, chapter 6, verse 1 of Paul's letter to the Romans. He says, What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. All right, and he goes on. He, he addresses this question, and there's a great deal of controversy. Um, uh, there are um, some Christian traditions that say uh, that in, in chapter 6 and 7, Paul is talking about what we used to be before we were saved, when he talks about the struggle with sin. On, on the grounds of that, he says, we have died to sin. So he says, well, then that's it. That's, you know, some, some traditions say that that's it. So uh, sin no longer has any hold on you. And other traditions say, well, who am I going to believe, Paul or my lying eyes? Um, you know, because sin seems to have some kind of a grip on me. So, so there is this, this debate between different Christian traditions about what exactly Paul is getting at here. And um, the best description I've heard um, is, that, is that Paul talks about... Um, uh, about having died to, to Christ, that we have, we have been given a new birth. Uh, uh, Jesus talks, you know, the famously in John 3.16, he says we've been uh, born from above or we've been born anew. And so that idea that there is the old self that has died, the, the old self that was a slave to sin, and there's the new self that is not a slave to sin. But the problem is they're both there and they, they keep talking to each other. The, the old one has died, but sin is still in it. And so sin is always present. Sin is, is right there telling the new one, hey, you know, <laughs> did God really say? Um, or, you know, the, the famous questions that we're asked when we're tempted. So, so um, the, the answer is um, we are no longer a slave to sin, but we are not necessarily uh, immune from its influence. Um, but uh, it's like your parents told you, you know, you don't want to uh, hang out with those bad people. So unfortunately, this one you're going to be hanging out with, but you need to learn, we need to learn to pay less attention to it. So, um, so is, is sinning among the saved a voluntary choice? Um, 
does it seem like it? You know, am I the only one? Um, it doesn't always seem like it's, um, like it's uh, um, uh, voluntary. But on the other hand, um, you know, there's a, uh, when, when I do something that I know is wrong, uh, there is always this little nudge in me, and Paul talks about this too, the nudge that says, yeah, you're giving in, or you know what the right thing to do is. And Paul talks about how the Holy Spirit speaks in our, in our life. So there's this debate going on. There's the debate of sin in the old self and the Holy Spirit who is telling us what the right thing to do is. Um, and uh, 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 it, it may be voluntary in the sense that we get to choose, but it's... It's not voluntary in the sense that we're left on our own. You know, we have to figure out what, what we think about sinning and so forth. So, um, so uh, we, uh, it's a hard question. Um, it's a hard question because the answer is easy, but it just doesn't seem that easy. So um, that's why we, we as Christians talk about trusting and obeying, right? Because when we're saying, I don't, I don't think that's the way it works. Um, it sure doesn't seem that way to me. I know I've got to do this. You know, I've got to, to go to that place. I've got to see that person. You know, if I don't, I'll just die. That that's basically sin lying to us. And so we should trust the part of us that's saying, no, you are not actually obligated to do that anymore. So that was the easy question. Okay, the uh, second one. Some people have claimed that marijuana was used by the ancient priests of Israel. Cite source. Um, no, no, I mean, I'm not surprised. I, I, you know, uh, people, people have uh, said things like this. Certainly we know that uh, many ancient religions did use um, uh, uh, mind-altering drugs, uh, uh, substances, not mind-altering substances, um, as part of their, um, their processes. The... Um, Famously, the oracle in Delphi was built on the, the side of a mountain, and there would be like steam, and we're not sure what else that came out of the mountain um, that, that affected people's understanding of what the oracle was saying. So the question goes on, do I think that's true, and what role might psychoactives play in heightening our spiritual awareness? Um, man, uh, I don't know if it's true. So, uh, so uh, there's nothing in the Bible about, um, about uh, uh, marijuana. Um, I'm pretty confident of that. Um, but there's, there's lots of things about um, uh, burning offerings and so forth, so I don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure there weren't gummies. Um, <laughs> but uh, but um, I don't know. But what role might psychoactives play in heightening our spiritual awareness? You know, this is, this is the... the you know, here's the thing, right? We are luminous beings. We're spiritual creatures. We believe, as, as Christians, that there is more to life than the material world. But at the same time, there is the material world. And, you know, it's not just, it's not just you know, us you know, poor Christians who are affected by the material world. We read that Jesus got hungry. Jesus got tired. Jesus slept. Jesus wept. Jesus embodied. Uh, he, was, he was incarnate in a material being. And so, um, so there is, there's a big question here. No one even knows what the, what the mind is. I mean, you know, I think I've got one. You probably think you've got one too, but, but where is it? What's it made out of? You know, a um, uh, couple of thousand years ago, they thought it was the stomach, and then they thought it was the heart. And uh, lately, you know, the last hundred years or so, we've decided that the mind is in the brain. But um, when they try to pin it down, you know, they have the, the fMRI scans and so forth, and they try to figure out, you know, where exactly is the mind? Nobody knows. Nobody really has an idea where consciousness lies. So, um, so there is some kind of, yes? I was just going to say that I look forward to having a cup of coffee when I get here at church, and I bring it up to church with okay. me because I saw Bill Potts doing this. Okay. Like so okay there's, there's a psychoactive uh, chemical right there. So, <laughs> so you've got that caffeine. Uh, so, um, so there is, there is that, that uh, material reality that we're, we're uh, a part of, and at the same time, we're spiritual beings. So um, uh, let's, I, I'm going to go completely uh, uh, 
into deep water here. So, um, so here's the question. Imagine that, that there is a piece of the brain, you know, I don't know what it is, the, the dorsal, ventral, medial, something rather. Okay, there's that part of the brain, and it is the place where that spirituality joins up with the material world, right? I don't know, but, but you know, because I don't know where that whole material, you know, where, the, where, where consciousness lies. So I can't know where super consciousness um, accesses us, right? But let's, let's hypothesize, let's, let's suppose that that's true. Okay, well, if that's true, then if you, you know, stick an electrode into the brain and start zapping it, will that person um, experience something that they can't tell any different from, from, um, from being a, a spiritual um, idea or a spiritual um, uh, experience? I, I can't imagine at some point, you know, the, 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 the interfaces between our material reality and our spiritual reality must have some kind of a connection. So, um, so um, uh, what that looks like and how it, how it works, I don't know. Um, I do know, I was talking to someone once. Um, he, uh, he had had a suicidal depression. And um, some friends of his recommended that he go to um, this... Uh, a practitioner in New York City who um, he, he lived in the East, and um, he he went to this practitioner and took um, took uh, I forget what it was some mushroom, and I don't remember what the what the particular chemical was, psilocybin maybe I don't know, um, uh, whatever it was, and he said that he had you know the kind of mystical experience he saw the universe you know the kind of things you hear people talk about. Um, and, you know, I don't know what, what he experienced. You know, I heard this secondhand, or I heard it from him, but I didn't experience it myself. But um, that was about four years ago, and he says he's never been depressed ever since. That he, he had the, the universe open up to him, and he saw how, you know, we're all lovey-dovey, and, you know, I mean, stuff that, that you know, I haven't experienced myself, so I can't, I can't relate to except to say it sounded like he was saying these things. So, um, so... Uh, is that is that something that happened? I don't know. Um, you know, I mean, I, you know, what happened? Uh, I, I believe that he said that this, you know, I believe what he said, but I don't know what actually happened. Um, uh, let me, let me um, come to you in just a moment. Um, so, so uh, lastly, um, uh, I've, I've, I've read that um, not only, not only, um, chemical, um, uh, external chemicals can affect that hypothetical part of the brain. But I've also read that physical activity can, can, um, can do it. You know that there are some religious practices uh, in, in different world religions that do great exertions. They, they dance around for a long time or they, they do different things. And the idea is that that also affects whatever part of the brain is. And no, nobody knows what that part of the brain is. But but it, it affects that so that there's these different ways that the material world can influence the, the, um, our perception of the spiritual world. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, to, to, to close that, and I'll come to you, um, I, think, I think the question for us to wrestle with is, um, is that real? Is that, is that real the way God is real? Um, you know, the, the, the thing I would hold on to is that all truth is God's truth. That, that Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. That if it's true, then it is of God. And if it's false, it's not of God. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm not prepared to tell people what they, what they have a personal experience with is, is false. But I just don't know... Um, I don't know enough about it in terms of how, how brain chemistry works and things like that. I don't know where those things actually intersect with, um, with spirituality. So um, you had a question. So go, go ahead and say it, and I'll, I'll repeat it for the people online. Okay. Well, I, I was just going to say that uh, 
I, I was told that, that a temple of the Lord is within me. And um, as well that if my mind was to die, that I would think that I would, I would ask the Lord for mercy with my heart. And then, of course, if my heart dies, well, then I stand with my soul and I beg for mercy. Um, okay. And, and I don't know. Okay. So, so um, you know, this, this, we talked about uh, the indwelling Holy Spirit, the, the Spirit that, that speaks to us um, uh, to guide us in, in, our new, in our new selves as we're still being subjected to the temptations um, from the, 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 the law of sin and death that, that uh, still um, accompanies us as we walk around in our, in our flesh. Um, uh, so there, there is this question, you know, where is the Holy Spirit? You know, is the Holy Spirit camped out in some part of your brain? You know, we talk about the indwelling Holy Spirit. Again, centuries ago they said the Holy Spirit lived in your heart. Again, you know, the Holy Spirit's not going to show up on an fMRI, I'm pretty sure. So, um, so we just don't know. But uh, Scripture tells us that the Spirit lives inside us, and I would say lives pretty much where the, the old self lives. Um, uh, there, is, there is this duality to us. And um, uh, some, some traditions, the way they resolve this is they say, look, my head aches every time I start thinking about matter about flesh and blood it's just too complicated i want to focus on the spirituality you know so i, I want to go up and you know uh, go into a trance and and just have mystical experiences and and as much as possible to leave behind my my physical self because it because we we you know we we have all kinds of problems starting with i'm hungry or i'm tired or i'm feeling lust or whatever else our our physical selves bring about a whole host of problems with them. But even if we can somehow transcend those, we've still got the question of, well, how does this all make sense? How, you know, where does my trance originate? Um, how, does it, how does it intersect with my physical reality? So there are uh, 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 philosophies and religions that say the secret is to leave the flesh behind, to just kind of discard it and be done with it. And Christianity does have an answer to that. It doesn't answer the marijuana question, really, uh, as far as I'm aware. But it does say, look, we are embodied beings. God made us with a body. God said after he had made the body, he looked at everything he made and he saw, and it was very good. God approves of, of us as embodied creatures. And if we weren't sure about that from the pages of Genesis, we can be sure of it from the New Testament because God came and lived in a body. That if, G that if bodies are good enough for Jesus, then they're good enough for us. There's no... There, there's no intention within Christianity to somehow transcend our, our mortal selves and, and just go off and you know, be Star Trek energy beings or something, that, that we will always have a body. And, and in, the, in the world to come, when Jesus returns and um, makes all things new, we will still be embodied creatures. So, all right. That's my answers to these two questions. Um, there's no rule that says we have to go um, to the end. <laughs> so um, I think we'll just stop there. Um, oh, what? I'm sorry? Oh, okay. All right. So um, thank you for the real stumpers. Um, let, me, um, let me say this before, before we close. This is exactly what I want um, to do from time to time. It, it, it forces me to kind of say, well, that's an awkward answer, and I don't have, I don't have a good answer, and maybe I should do some study or something like that. Um, because because if, if you let me write my sermon, I will come up with a way of kind of polishing off all the sharp edges and so forth. So this actually helps me as a pastor, and I hope it's helping to you because, because um, I will tell you, um, Left to my own devices, um, I would never have talked about marijuana in church. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's just, that's not something that's on my mind. So, um, but it's a big issue. I mean, drive around town. How many green buildings do you see, right? You know, it's, it's, you know I'd like to own the green paint business in this town, you know? <laughs> People splashing it on everything. So, um, you know, and the clever names. So, I mean, obviously, this is something that people care about. And because this is just not something that's on my radar, I didn't really think about it, and so I'm glad that this kind of question comes in, because maybe I should do more thinking about it. I have to believe, 
Um, I was taught as a pastor that, um, that my job is impossible, that, that if, 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 if I was to do my job in my own power, it would be hopeless. But the Holy Spirit wants me to succeed more than I do. So the Holy Spirit works in, in um, the, this task, the task of proclaiming the Word of God, and fills in the gaps. So um, I have to think that this is something where the Holy Spirit was involved somehow in bringing these questions to me. So I appreciate you uh, uh, letting me do this from time to time, and I hope that uh, we can continue doing it in the future. Let's, uh, let's go to God now in prayer. Heavenly Father, um, uh, we thank you for, um, for your, your scriptures and um, the, the way that they still um, are important in our lives, how we still, um, 2,000 years after Christ, still wrestle with uh, what exactly he did to save us from sin. And if he did save us, why is sin so tempting still? We thank you, Lord, um, as well for reassuring us in the face of all of the problems that come with having bodies that age and become sick and are affected by the, the, the chemicals and the uh, level of exertion, the, the length of time it's been since we slept, that in the face of all of these challenges, Lord, we can we can remember that you like bodies, that you thought them up, and you think they're a good idea. So Lord, help us to trust that, um, that in the face of all the problems that come with bodies, um, uh, they are a part of our um, present and a future, and that you approve. Help us to use them well in your service. All these things, Lord, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. You know, this is the, uh, on further review, the play stands. Um, I wanted to add something else, um, because I should, have, I should have talked about this before. Um, Jordan Peterson says, beware of, beware of uh, shortcuts. Um, C.S. Lewis says, the most dangerous thing you can do with God is to say, um, encore. That if God gives you some special experience, that, um, that you have, by God's grace, you know, like Paul says, uh, he was caught up to the third heaven and saw things that cannot be described. If God gives you some experience that is, you know, hair standing up on end, that's great. That's a blessing. And it is an act of ingratitude to say, let's do that again. Because God knows what his intentions are for you. And I think one of the dangers of using psychoactive chemicals, if they, if they are effective, and I don't know, um, if they are effective in accessing the things of God is to be very careful about trying to twist God's, God's arm and make God do something that God wouldn't have done on his own. Um, I was thinking about the uh, passage in the book of Acts. There's a bunch of um, sorcerers who see the way Paul is casting out demons, and um, they say, that's really cool. All you've got to do is say, in Jesus' name, come out. And so they, they see what, what Paul is doing. He's casting out demons, and they say, they say, um, let's go give that a try. So they do that, and um, the demon comes out and says, uh, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but I don't know who you are. And he you know, beats them up or something. I don't remember the whole story. But, but basically, be very careful trying to, um, to use, the, use the, the tools that God has given us in a way that God hasn't approved. So, um, so uh, hopefully that will add some, some nuance to what I said before. So... And now, um, 